Hey friends, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts with a fun and free Tunisian crochet pattern. I'm going to be honest with you, I've had a love-hate relationship with Lion Brand's homespun yarn for ages, but I finally come up with a project that highlights its best qualities and is actually really fun to crochet. This is the Bobby Fringe Scarf. A simple pattern and a slow hand makes this extra long rectangle scarf a must make for holiday gifts and craft shows. While watching this video, I strongly encourage you to follow along with the Bobby Fringe Scarf pattern, which is available for free on my blog, tlycblog.com. You can also get a one page printable version of this pattern from my shop, tlyarncrafts.com. If you're looking for the ultimate craft experience, pick up the Bobby Fringe Scarf as an all-in-one kit from lionbrand.com. The kit includes all of the yarn you need to make your scarf, as well as a PDF copy of the pattern. Choose the color combo that suits you best, and you can even add the necessary Tunisian crochet hook to your kit. Links for all of these resources are in the description. To make your Bobby Fringe Scarf, you'll need two colors of Lion Brand Homespun Yarn, which is a level 5 bulky weight. You'll need two balls of each color for the full size scarf, so four balls total. I'm using the colors Tourmaline and Painted Desert. You'll also need a 9mm Tunisian crochet hook, a tapestry needle, and a pair of scissors. With your first color, place a slip knot on your hook and chain 27. It'll be important to keep your gauge loose throughout this project, especially during the beginning chain. We'll need to work into the chains we make to create our foundation row. When you have your 27 chains, flip your chain over and do your best to find the back bumps of the chain. Honestly, at this point, it all just looks like bumps, so don't get too hung up on this step. The scarf will have fringe on both ends and will cover up any mistakes. Insert your hook under the back bump of the second chain from the hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Take your time with this step and repeat it all the way down the chain, and you'll have 27 loops on your hook when you get to the end. When you make it to the end of your chain, it's a good idea to do a count to make sure you have the correct number of loops. Even I was really surprised that I ended up with 27. Oh, got it, okay. Ooh. <laughs> now we'll do the return pass, which begins with a chain one, and then we'll yarn over and pull through the next two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll do that until we have just one loop left on our hook. Our next row begins the pattern for our scarf. Just keep in mind that the loop on our hook counts as our first stitch, so we're skipping this first vertical bar. We're going to put Tunisian purl stitches in the next two stitches. Bring the yarn to the front of your hook, insert your hook under the front vertical bar of the next stitch, bring your yarn to the back, yarn over, and pull through. Again, yarn to the front, insert into the front vertical bar of the next stitch, yarn to the back, yarn over and pull through. We'll Tunisian simple stitch each of the next 21 stitches. For the next stitch, insert behind the vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. And we'll do that for the front vertical bars of 21 stitches. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. One thing to keep in mind, make sure you keep your yarn very loose as you work. I found that when working with this yarn, if you pull the yarn too tight, it becomes incredibly difficult to find the front vertical bars to work your stitches into. Also, if you pull the yarn too tight, it'll make your scarf very stiff. Keep the yarn loose by working slowly and allowing the yarn to glide over your fingers. We're continuing our Tunisian simple stitches. And we'll have three stitches left before we change it up a little bit and end our row. So I've got my three stitches left, one, two, and three. I'm going to purl the next two stitches, yarn in front, insert, yarn to the back, yarn over and pull through, that's one. And here's the second. 
For our last stitch, we want to try and find the two vertical bars at the very end of our row. I found my two vertical bars here, so I'm going to insert my hook under both of those bars, yarn over, and pull up a loop. I now have 27 loops on my hook, and I can begin my return pass. Start with a chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and again, I'll repeat that until I have one loop left on my hook. The pattern for this scarf simply repeats itself, two purl stitches, 21 Tunisian simple stitches, two purl stitches, and then your last stitch. Let's do one more row together. Back at the beginning of my row, I have my two purl stitches. So here's one, and two. Now I'll Tunisian simple stitch 21. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, here's 19, 20, and 21. Then I'll purl the next two stitches. Here's one and two. And for my last stitch, I'll try my best to find those last two loops. Insert my hook under both of those bars, yarn over, pull up the loop. For my return pass, start with the chain one, yarn over, pull through two, until I've got one loop left on my hook. You want to continue in pattern until you have 30 total rows worked in your first color. I'm doing a slightly smaller sample for the sake of this tutorial, so I'll keep working a few more rows on mine. Now, on your 30th row, complete your return pass until you have two loops left on your hook. At that point, come on back and I'll show you how we'll change colors. I'm nearly done with my return pass on what would be my 30th row. I've got two loops on my hook here, and now I can grab my second color. I'm going to leave a nice long tail to weave in later, yarn over the hook, and pull through those last two loops in my new color. Now I can jump right back into my scarf pattern. After you get a few stitches in, you can cut the yarn from the first color to detach it from the scarf, making sure that you leave a long tail to weave in later. I'll continue working in pattern until I have 60 total rows with this color. At that point, I'll change back to my first color. I'm nearly done with the last row of my second color, and just so I don't forget to do it later, I'm going to go ahead and cut this yarn now, again leaving myself a nice long tail to weave in later. With two loops left on my hook, I can grab my first color, leave a nice long tail, yarn over, and pull through the loop. I want to complete my pattern in this color until I have 30 total rows. Once I complete 30 rows in this color, I'm ready to do a slip stitch bind off. Complete the return pass until there's just one loop on the hook, then find your next stitch, insert as for simple stitch, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops, and slip stitch in each vertical bar across the row. As with the rest of our scarf, be sure to keep the yarn loose when you're working your slip stitch bind off. This will ensure that your scarf's edge doesn't pucker from the tightness of these slip stitches. Once you've slip stitched in each stitch across the row, you can cut your working yarn to detach it from the scarf, then pull the loop up and out of the scarf. After all of that hard work, it's time to have some fun with fringe. Grab a tape measure if you have one and measure out several lengths of yarn that are 18 inches long. 
I'll usually measure the first one, then use that one to measure all the rest of the fringe. We'll trim the edges later, so don't worry about being too accurate here. Once all of your lengths are cut, we can attach the fringe to the scarf. Insert a crochet hook under both loops of any stitch along the short sides of the scarf. Grab two lengths of yarn together, fold them in half, and lay the yarn over the hook. Pull the hook and the yarn through the stitch, insert the yarn ends through the loop, and pull firmly, holding the base of the scarf so you don't stretch the stitch. Repeat this for each stitch along both of the short sides of your scarf. Once all of your fringe is placed, you'll want to trim to an even length. You can easily do this by hand, but here's how I like to do it. Grab a cutting mat, a clear acrylic ruler, and a rotary cutter. Line up your scarf along one of the lines of the cutting mat, and then measure out eight to nine inches. Lay your ruler to create a straight line across the fringe and apply pressure. Slowly and carefully cut the fringe with the rotary cutter. Now look, this step isn't entirely necessary, but it is seriously so satisfying and you get the straightest cuts with this method. Trim the fringe on the other side of your scarf, weave in your ends, and you're all set. I want to thank you so much for joining me to make the Bobby Fringe Scarf today. So, have I sold you? Are you willing to give Lion Brand Homespun a chance? Let me know down in the comments. I'm Tony of TL Yarn Crafts, and I'll see y'all next time.